Hello Targ, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and once again it's time for another Orc Mode workout and today was Max Effort Bench Press Day. You guys know the rules though for those of you who watch these videos every day. Please click like down below before we watch the one rep max or training max attempt. Reach down there, click it. You guys know you watch these videos every day. We are not keeping the likes caught up and only you can do that. So I appreciate it. Reach down there and click that. Uh, today was against 80 pounds of band tension. Uh, everything felt good today. Everything felt stable. I was happy with bar speeds. I went with what's a medium grip for me, but for most people it would still count as a close grip. Meaning I'm about an inch and a half off the rings. Or, or an inch and a half off of the smooths in the middle. Uh, I am still probably slightly closer to the smooths than I am the rings. For me, wide grip is like to touch the rings at all. And I can't do that without my shoulders eventually hurting. Uh, shoulders felt good today though, and I have to admit, now that I went to just a hair wider, uh, I felt a bit more peck today. Definitely felt some peck on this, although I still think my delts are the weak link, but some peck, which means we definitely need to make sure my chest is growing, which we're addressing with the floor press, but uh, it was decent today. This went up really, really easy. It's 275 with 80 pounds of bands. It's like, ah, that's easy. Went up 10 more. Um, decided to call it quits with 10 more. 285 felt good, looked good. I was happy with it. I just felt like another bump I might risk a miss and I don't want to miss two bench days in a row on a max. So it was good. We were above 90%, strained, got a good feel for it, and then jumped into my assistance work. But as we watched this, it went, went pretty good. Had good control. Finding my ideal touch point when I use a slightly wider grip. Takes a little work, but I found it. Uh, and I feel like that's a good spot for touching. It's, I have good control on the eccentric. Happy with that. So we have to keep moving forward. But shoulder felt good with that grip width today. So my shoulders are getting healthier. Uh, I went ahead and did the same grip width on the floor press. Felt a lot of chest. You guys are going to notice what I've decided to do with the volumes is very similar to what I do for squat and deadlift movements. I don't need an enormous amount of volume on my biggest supplemental lift. In this case, the floor press. I do need to keep it progressing. Three sets of 10. Okay, three sets of 10. And what I did today, I got 11 on the final set, which tells me I can bump it a hair. Try to progress with three sets of challenging 10s on a main supplemental lift. Just like I do with the glute bridges for my deadlift, when my deadlift is climbing. Then we go into all the volume. Now, I'm gonna keep the same pattern I've been doing. I feel like I need the incline and the overhead press. I feel like I can't do both in the same workout. So we're gonna alternate. Uh, so today is going to be the axle bar standing press. And I did five basically limit sets, high rep limit sets. They were all 12 or more reps. And obviously only 12 as it got challenging. But the floor press, um, again, this felt good. Felt plenty of chest, fair amount of tricep. But this is what I will use to grow my chest. And I don't need as much volume. Pecs are not as volume resistant as a lot of other movements. This will have direct carry over to my bench. Okay, good strict floor press like this will absolutely have 100% carry over to the bench, especially if I just go ahead and just kind of stick with that same grip. I feel like that's a good middle ground for my grip. I feel strong in that position and my shoulders can handle it. It's not wide enough that it ever causes me any shoulder inflammation. So I think it's a good spot. So I can do both of them uh, with that grip. I can do both of them with that grip. And like I said, this will definitely increase bench but the volume can't be excessive. Even though I do a ton of volume, I feel like since I do this every two days, three good quality sets of this after a max, what I think probably increased my bench on its own, just over the long term, just over the long term, just because of the hypertrophy of all the muscles. And it's a stricter movement, easier to recover from. And that's what people need to remember with some of this. They're like, well, why not just do more benching? Because this is easier to recover from. It forces you to be strict and it uses a little more chest out of the bottom, right? It forces you to stay tight. There's no real way to cheat. Like you have to just push through it. You have to push through it. It, it will make me nice and strong at the bottom of the bench and I'm a raw bencher. But the delts are still, I feel like, my primary weak link. So they're going to get more total volume. And delts are resistant to volume. We know, as I've said repeatedly, my delts are undersized. People can say all they want about my arms, thinking my arms are small. No one thinks that in real life these days, right? That is purely an internet thing, and it's because my back and stuff is so big. 
I think people, they don't fully grasp my stats when they see me on camera. Um, it, it's, I don't look how you would think I look in person. So my arms aren't really that small at this point, but I'm big overall. My delts, though, really and truly are a weak link. They really are. And they have to come up. They have to come up from my bench. So we're going to put more effort into delts and triceps and all that than chest. But the chest will grow off the floor press. But that's not a really a volume resistant muscle. And if it really starts to lag, I'll find a way to do chain or band flies, right? Not a big deal. But as I'm a closer grip bencher, the delts and the triceps have to be overdeveloped. And for me at this point, the delts is the more lagging muscle. So five sets of overhead press. And I'll go over to five sets of incline on the alternating days. Doing plenty of reps. Every one of these sets were at least 12 reps. Some of them are rest pause near the end because it's getting fatiguing. And I feel a lot of tricep on this with the axle bar. It's one of the things I like about the axle bar. Yes, it trains my forearms more. Uh, the tricep activation is really, really good. Great for triceps in general. I just didn't want to do it on the floor press anymore because I feel like it's limiting my potential tension. Right? We have to get the quality work in. And that's a big movement, just like something like my glute bridges and hip thrusts are big movement for lower body. Those are, again, primary accessories for me. I have to push them hard. The other stuff is about straight volume, which is what we're doing. And I don't historically have any history of doing high volume delt work. I think it's going to work based upon the data I've seen, based upon the way my body's responded to stuff. I have a feeling my shoulders are going to blow up. But the upside, again, with the axle bar, we're getting more forearm work. And I'm still grip specializing. Um, people need to remember that. I don't think they realize that with everything I do. My grip actually is getting, and forearms are getting a ton of training. And I've already told you guys what I do off camera in addition to all the axle bar stuff. Um, but I, people would say, why don't you film that? Because, guys, I do it while laying around doing other stuff. I don't want to, later in the day, have to throw my shorts on and set up a camera. A lot of my grip training is stuff that I do when I'm relaxing and chilling and watching a, a TV show or a movie and on my me time. Because I can do grip work in the middle of all that. I can do pinch block work. I can do my grippers. I can do ultra high band curls because I do band curls every day. Really high band curls. I could maybe start filming some of my standing right behind the back wrist curls. But, you know, again, it's just forearm work. Just forearm work. And I feel like the axle bar is probably having the, one of the largest impacts. All that stuff added together, I bet, only maybe equals as much as I'm getting out of the axle bar work. The axle bar is the real game changer. So that's what I, it needs to be filmed anyways. Because that, that, that really is making the biggest difference. I think the other stuff doesn't matter as much, even though it matters. Also, I'm doing a lot of shoulder mobility work. I always get people ask, why don't you lock those? That is my lockout. If you were come over and ask me and put a gun to my head and say, lift your arms over your head, you're going to see that's exactly what's going to happen. Overhead, that's what I can do. Now, I'm doing some intensive, pretty serious shoulder mobility work in theory to help that first thing every morning at like five in the morning every single day we'll see if it helps but i think it's largely structural with my bone structure i think it's bone hitting bone it is what it is and the camera exacerbates it the camera because of that fisheye lens distorts it makes it look even more pronounced so it is what it is uh then we did the chain laterals which Again, talk about finding our sweet spots. This angle, laying up against that pad, really, really is making me feel like I'm finally working my side delts. We found our sweet spot. And it lets me do it in a way that doesn't crush the glenoid. That's one of the take-homes. That's important. I want guys to remember that, and I want that to be very, very clear. When you see bodybuilders do that, oh, turn your pinky up. Okay. I'm 43 years old without a good surgeon. That would be really stupid. That is one of the stupidest things to ever come out of the bodybuilding world. Yeah, it hurts for a reason. Okay, you are going to need surgery eventually to fix that hurt. It's not the muscle that's hurting. That why you feel it so deep. So, I need to be able to keep the thumbs up a hair. And I grip the things in such a way to cause that. But we also have to get enough forward lean 
and control that we are using the side out in spite of that. All right, and I found the sweet spot here. Now, you can't do a lot of weight, right? You can't do a lot of weight. God, you're like, I'm going to do this with 50s. Yeah, you better have cannonball sized belts. But I'm doing around 20 reps to failure. I lose count. It's approximately 20 reps before I fail on these. That's fine. 5 by 20. A very volume resistant muscle. I think it'll be fine. So my delts are getting a variety of rep ranges. Right? But they're going to get a higher priority because they need to come up. My whole shoulder girdle. With the delts all the way across the board. They're weak link in my benching. Weak link visually. And I'm going to need to bring them up because I'm going to cut later this year at some point again. No, I'm not giving you guys a schedule. Because if I give you a schedule, I'm a liar if I don't stick to it. Okay? I don't have a schedule. I have no current plans of a start or an end date. So if I give you any date, because people will ask, I will be lying to you. And I'm all the time accused falsely, by the way, of being a liar. So let's not start asking me to lie to you guys. The truth is, I don't have an exact plan, nor do I plan on making an exact plan any time in the next month or two. I will cut 10 pounds or so at some point later this year. But in the meantime, I better get my delts and arms bigger. Because I need it. They have to grow for my lifts, and they're not going to grow in the middle of a cut. Unless I trend hard, which I'm not willing to do at my age. Right? Crap kills you. So, we do it now. Then we do the high rep band press downs to failure. This finishes off the triceps. This is making sure that my triceps get plenty of work. Now, my triceps are no weak link right now on my pressing, but my arm development tends to lack historically. I need to stay ahead of it. So once my delts get stronger, my triceps could very quickly become a weak link. Let's just get their work capacity up, keep them growing, and tendon health. I don't have a real history of elbow tendonitis. Let's keep it that way. Okay. You guys are over about 35. You need to be doing band press downs. Probably be a good idea. You want a big bench. Keep your tendons healthy. I do the same thing for my biceps every night. Keep the tendons healthy and strong and hypertrophied so that we can reduce injuries. My bench is going up. So I need to be aware of that. Deadlift definitely going up. So I have to take care of those bicep tendons. Same thing with my erector tendons, right? We need to make sure we thicken up our connective tissue in the places that are prone to injury or tendonitis. And in this case, we kill two birds with one stone. We're hitting the triceps from a completely different rep range, making sure they're growing, taking care of our tendon health. And yes, there's an overspeed eccentric involved in a stretch reflex. It's one of the reasons this works so well. Yes, it hurts. Yes, you will cramp. But it's effective. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.